guess it was a reasonable night in that little hotel house thing. Um, except I think Katie would have lost her mind there because they didn't stop making, like, so you have the area where you sleep, but it's very close to the area where you don't sleep. And, um, the area where you don't sleep is like kind of like a social area. And when I fell asleep at like 1130, the party was still rolling. Like, it was still pretty noisy. So, like, I can fall asleep through just about anything, but I'm sure Katie would have been losing her mind. She would have rather yell at people. <laughs> So like, again, like strict, 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 we can't take out your trash, but we're gonna just have a, like, a, this is just gonna be this drinking party. It was the people that own the place were participating in it. So it's just like, come on guys, like, what are we doing here? So then I was just leaving like this a minute ago. And there was the nice girl that I mentioned yesterday that like got me the bike. And then the lady that like, I think owns the place or whatever. And um, they were they were at the, near the door. And I was putting on my shoes, and the nice girl was kind of concerned. Like, she was like, you're, gonna, you're just going to walk? Like, really? You're just going to walk? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. And as I was explaining, like, oh, I just get hitchhiker, I'll take a bus. Like, I'm in the middle of my sentence, and the other lady is just like, goodbye. <laughs> I was just like, what the fuck? Like, just basically shut up. So, I don't... I, <laughs> I don't know how ladies deal is. <laughs> she, uh... <laughs> It's interesting. <laughs> I either misread the bus schedule, I'm standing at the wrong bus station, but either way, there's not a bus coming for like a long time, so uh, <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. I stumbled across a bus terminal like two minutes after I made my sign, and um, I talked to some, <laughs> these guys must be related to the lady at the hotel, pretty unfriendly dudes, that uh, they, they, I mean, they, they told me the information I needed and like take this bus, but like they were, uh, not real excited about it. <laughs> I mean, that's okay, you don't gotta be excited, but you know what I'm saying. So I don't know, maybe this neighborhood is a stir. You know what it is? It's because it looks like America here. Everybody's grumpy. <laughs> this neighborhood's like these big houses and everything. It's like crushing them. All right, somehow I've lost my wallet. <laughs> After being on a bus that doesn't take like a IC card. Um. I have no idea where it could be. It could be, I guess, at this family mart place. Fuck, this is not good. I went to eat last night. I think I used it when I bought that bento. And I, I, God, I don't know where I left it. I have no idea. Um, this is pretty serious. Like, I don't have, I don't have any way to get any money other than that wallet. So, uh, I guess I, I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to get back now. Um, the bus driver was just laughed at his told him I was like, I lost my wallet, man. And he laughed at me. He was like, get off, no problem. So I don't know if I'm gonna, I'm not, this, I think there's no chance of making it that late today. Like, no way. Um, sucks. I really wanted to go there. Uh, yeah, so I'm kind of in panic mode. All right, so um, it's been a few hours since I was on that bus and I realized I didn't have my wallet. Man, this is not good. <laughs> really not good. So I have zero yen. I have no way to get money out of an ATM. I have no credit card. Um, I have paid for tonight already via the internet and I think I can continue paying via the internet unless I cancel my credit card, which is the smart thing to do right now. Like, if somebody has my wallet, they could use my credit card. However, we're in Japan. Odds are they probably wouldn't, but I mean, you know, you don't know, but if I cancel my credit card, I can't keep paying for a hotel. So then I'm homeless. Like what? <laughs> what do I do? You know what I mean? What, what should I do? <laughs> so um, it happens to be a holiday, which is not detrimental, but does change things. Like banks and stuff are closed. So um, I wonder. The good thing about this, I have my passport. My passport is, um, I left it in my big bag. I brought it with me. I don't even know why. I just put it in my bag. I didn't expect to take an international trip. Really happy I have it now. So I have identification. So I'm wondering if I can go like find a bank, a local bank that maybe I, maybe my bank has a local branch. I don't even know if they do or not. And I can just go in there and try to get money out using my passport and maybe my pin number or something like that. Maybe they'll have a system like that. Knowing Japanese banks, that might be a nightmare, but it's, I mean, at this point, what, what else am I gonna do? Um, there's also the possibility that we can transfer money through a convenience store, so Katie could just wire me some money. So that system somehow has got to exist here, like a wiring money. I know I've seen Western Unions, no idea if there's any in the town I'm in, 
Um, but, you know, worst case scenario, maybe we can do something like that. Um, so I don't know what's gonna happen to my trip though at this point. Um, luckily it's cheap. I mean, I can, in theory, I could get home just by hitchhiking if I didn't have that ferry. <laughs> don't have any cash to get across the, the water for the ferry, so. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, a guy stopped and helped me and he was like, he, cause I was frantically just tearing my bag apart off the side of the road off the, uh, with that, after I got off that bus. But the bus driver was like, he just laughed at me and said, get off by the way, if I didn't mention that. So this guy comes to me and he's like, you know, you need any help finding something. And I was like, my wallet. <laughs> and it was like, all right, really friendly, nice. Really, really friendly guy, super nice. Took me to, um, took me across the street to the police station. And um, as this is setting in, my Japanese is just degrading. <laughs> so when I met that guy, I explained everything to him, like exactly how it happened and everything. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. We get to the police station and like, I'm starting to realize the gravity of the situation. And I'm having a harder and harder time, like conveying things in Japanese. So it was actually really awesome that I talked to that guy before my brain like caught up with what the situation was because he basically just explained everything to the cop like really clearly and like it was super nice and like everything got conveyed properly and everything. And the cop um, seemed honestly, I mean he was worried about my wallet and my situation but at first he was way more worried about if I was here legally because um, I had no identification on me and he was kind of like okay well when does your visa expire and he wanted to know the dates and stuff and I was like dude I, I don't know my passport is back at the hotel um, and I don't have my, my, my gaijin card or whatever which is your ID card and I was like I don't have that it's in the wallet and like he's like mm, well 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 and he's like calling these people and asking them what the processes are and stuff this went on for quite a while and then he finally started going okay well let's start looking for your wallet and like went through the where have you been thing and the last time that I can remember using it was at a um, convenience store last night and um, I bought an ice cream <laughs> and I couldn't use my Suica, my IC card for the train system. I usually use it as a convenience source so I had to use cash. So I used cash and that's the last time I used it. I know for a fact that I had it then. So um, the, we called the guest house and she checked around my room and they didn't have it at the guest house. And they called the bus terminal, which is that place that I came earlier with the grumpy guy. So we called the bus terminal and we asked them if it was anywhere and they said no. And we went through all these loops and he filled all this paperwork and I got a ride in a cop car. And the cop gave me a ride to the bus terminal so I could look for myself, which was on the way to the hotel, which he took me back to. So I went back to the hotel and we talked to the lady there and we jumped through all the hoops and blah, blah, blah. And um, basically now I have taken the bicycle that um, the guest house has and uh, ridden the route that I walked this morning looking for the, the, the wallet, um, hoping that it would be, you know, on the ground somewhere. Um, so it wasn't. <laughs> I'm gonna ride back the same route and see if it's there. Um, I went to the convenience store that I bought the ice cream at last night and explained the situation. They said they hadn't found a wallet. Um, and I gave them some information so they can contact me. The cops can contact me, but hilariously, they can't email me. I don't have a phone, phone. I have a voicemail number. And I was like, well, can you, can you email me? You know what I mean? And he was like, he laughs. And he's just like, we don't have that kind of technology. <laughs> it's like, all right. So turned into a thing where he can either leave me a voicemail on my voicemail box, which is, that's a thing that can happen or he can call a guest house and then the guest house can email me. Um, so that's just, I, that's another loop that, another hoop that doesn't need to exist. But the cop like was just like, yeah, can't email you dude. I know it's in the zone of voice voice was just like, yeah, I know, I know. So anyway, we got in the car and he was like, all right, where's the guest house? And I tell him the address and everybody in this country, everybody has a navigation unit, everybody. It's like standard. And he was like, all right, where is it? And he, he didn't know where the address was. So he got up this giant map because he doesn't have a navigation system in his car. And he's using this giant map and like looking on like this huge, huge map and like, you know, deciphering all of the cryptic, like where things are things that I went through yesterday looking for the guest house. And um, he, he found it. I mean, he had to use the map, but I mean, it probably took him a month of training to learn how to read it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so. I dug through everything I have at the hotel or whatever. It's my wallet, my wallet's not there. So um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I have no idea what's gonna happen next. Um, I have 400 yen on my, um, my IC card, 
which is, um, like I said, what you use for the train system. It's this thing. So you can use this at a lot of convenience stores, which is awesome. Um, but there's only 400 yen on it. That's all the money I've got. And I have a bottle of water, thank God. <laughs> you get water out of the tap, so that's not that big of a deal. And a bag of chips that I was gonna have for breakfast like five hours ago. That I still haven't eaten. And now I'm like rationing my chips in my mind. Like, am I hungry enough for this? <laughs> uh, give me my last meal. So I've contacted Katie and she's gone and got a bunch of money out of an ATM somewhere in Tokyo, hopefully, and we're gonna figure out how to get it to me. Um, hopefully it's just as easy as doing it at a convenience store. There's a convenience store right over here. And I think I'm gonna bust up in there and ask him if you can wire money, which is, that's something I've never talked about in Japanese. So I don't, I'm, that's gonna be, uh, hopefully this person is patient. <laughs> All right, so um, the, the best idea is that you can send money with um, some of the convenience stores, we think, like I said. So I went into this Lawson and I talked to literally the nicest girl in the world. And she was like, oh, I don't know if you can do that. She's like, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. And they've got these machines that you can buy like um, tickets for concerts and do all sorts of weird things, bus tickets and stuff like that off of that are called Lopi that aren't, I don't think they're owned by Family Mart. I think they just are in Family Marts and it's another company. Because whenever they have a question, there's a phone on the Lopi and the people that work there pick it up and talk to somebody on the other end that works for Lopi. So um, we went over the machine. She was like, you know, I think maybe you can do that with this machine. I was like, oh, this is gonna be amazing because like Lawson is super easy to, to find in Tokyo. It's super easy to find here. I found one, etc." So she goes and she found the thing that says cash out. And she's like, okay. And I was like, this is, she was like, how, this is how you do it. All you need is a number that is given to you by the person who sends the money. You type in the number and then you get money. It's like, sweet, this is perfect, this is exactly what I need. So I looked at it for a little while, and she told me, she was like, oh, if you come back and need help with it, I'll help you, and all this. And she's like, the nicest person ever. And um, so I was like, okay, sweet. So I looked at it for a while, because I'm gonna have to explain to Katie how to do this, like, on her side. So um, I was looking through the machine, and I was like, how do you put cash in? <laughs> You know, so I asked the girl, I was like, how do you do that? And she came over and she looked at it, she was like, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. She flipped through the screens and stuff. Called somebody, talked to them, she didn't know. She went in the back for a while, came out, and she's like, okay, so there's, these, there's this place called Wellnet or something, and you have to go to a Wellnet, give them the money, they give you a special number, you wait a few hours, and then you can pull the money out of um, the, any, anywhere in the country at Lawson's at one of these lopey things. So I was like, okay, Okay, is there like, I've never even heard of Wellnet before. This is not a thing I've ever heard of. So we, she, we, her and I used the, our phones or whatever, my tablet and her phone, and we found there's one Wellnet in Tokyo and one in Sapporo, and that's it. So she was like, yeah, you can, you can do that. So she called the Wellnet to see like, you know, what the, what the system would be. And the Wellnet is closed because it's a holiday today. So we didn't make any more ground on that. And um, I, at this point, have explained my whole story to her. And um, she went and got me a bag of food and just gave it to me. And she just said, you can have it. So like, this is my shout out to Lawson and the girl that works at this Lawson. Like, she like really like, they gave me, and this chicken is so fucking good. So she gave me a thing of chicken um, and then two onigiri. I've got a, um, uh, <laughs> She chicken mayonnaise, so probably tuna with mayonnaise. She chicken is that, I guess. I don't know, tuna. <laughs> and uh, which one is this? What is this? Uh, I don't know the kanji for that. It's really familiar, but it's a sake. It's a sake. It's some sort of fish or something. I don't know what. It, I don't know what it is. I'm really happy. I have food. I am freaking starving right now. So um, yeah, huge. Like this is. I'm advertising for Lawson right now. They they've won me over. Like, I used to be a 7-Eleven uh, guy. Not anymore. Lawson number one. <laughs> it's written in English. Salmon. <laughs> I think it's some sort of special salmon. I don't know. I don't care. I can get down on some salmon. This is a horrible experience, and at the same time, an amazing experience. You know what I mean? Like, you just get to... S I mean, I don't want to take advantage of people or anything. I, I really... That's not my intention, of course. But, like, just to see... The hitchhiking thing has been a similar thing. Like... I'm not doing it because I want to save money. I mean, it's nice to save money. I'm doing it to meet people and like to have good experiences with strangers and stuff. And that's like, that's my main goal. And 
I, I just had that again just now. Like this, she didn't have to be that nice. She didn't have to, she could have just been like, call somebody on the thing by yourself, deal with it. But she like really stepped over way, way over. She's not obligated to help me that much. Like at all. Like we, she was on a personal phone, like looking things up. She gave me this stuff. I'm mean, just kind of overwhelmed at the moment with how kind she was. And um, like, I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm gonna eat. I mean, I should stop talking, I'm gonna eat. I'm really wound up in the head, sorry. <laughs> sure you can understand. All right, so let's talk about the food. This is a tomato barbecue sauce chicken. So Lawson is famous for these little packs of chicken that they have, and they've got like hot ones, and they come in all kinds of weird flavors and stuff, and it's basically like a chicken nugget. It comes with a, um, a toothpick to eat it off of, because, you know, you don't want to get your fingers funky. <laughs> I love Japan, yeah? So, um, yeah, and I've never had this one before, but it's really, really good. Maybe the circumstances are making it even more tasty, but even the worst Lawson's chicken is like amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a chicken nugget with, like, it's not all that weird processed meat like it is in um, McDonald's chicken nuggets are. It's got like normal looking chicken meat in there as well, but then also some of that weird processed stuff. <laughs> um, if you come to Japan, go into a Lawson's and pick out some chicken, because like, <laughs> this is important. It's like, really important to try this because it is very, very good. You will never meet anybody that lives in Japan that's like, eh, Lawson's chicken sucks. It's just, nah, it's not, a, it's not an opinion that exists. Everybody knows that this stuff is baller. <laughs> All right, so I came to 7-Eleven, wasn't that far, and the lady was just like, uh, let me get the boss. <laughs> and the boss came out and he understood what I was saying and everything, but Santa just didn't care. I don't know, he is just, it's not, that's not his problem. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I don't expect everybody to be as like wonderful as that other girl was. So this guy reacted normally, but he was just like, we, we don't have, we don't have that type of service. So, um, for some reason in our heads, Family Mart is able to do that. But around here, the closest Family Mart is like miles and miles and miles away. So, um, I'm not quite sure what to do next. Um, Katie's actually, <laughs> Katie's, Katie's busy right now. She's, she's practicing drums right now. So, um, she will be doing that for a few hours. So I guess I'll just go back to the guest house. I, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. At least I'm not gonna starve. I've got, I've still got those to two onigiri. I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> back at the, uh, the guest house. And uh, I've gone through everything three or four times. This, this wall's not here. If it's here, then it's some, this is pulling a magic trick. So anyway, I'm chilling, waiting for Katie to um, hop back online and she's gonna go and um, talk to people at convenience stores in Tokyo. See if we can figure out a way to get Buddy this direction. A lady at Lawson that uh, gave me the onigiri was like, I think you have to go to this special place like I mentioned earlier, but she said they might be able to send it directly from stores. Maybe they have a different feature in Tokyo that we don't have here on our machine or something. So um, she said, give it a try. You can ask. I mean, how much is there to ask? So we're going to do that. Um, but something very adorable is happening. Um, I guess the lady that runs the place that is uh, supposedly the mother of this little girl who's like three maybe four years old and she has apparently explained to the little girl that I have lost my wallet and the little girl is going around everywhere looking for the wallet and um, I had been gone for a while and then when I came back she realized I came back um, a few minutes ago even though I've been here for hours and she came and she opened this little curtain and she was just like did you find your wallet? <laughs> I'm like no I'm not and she's just like oh and she just went off and I can hear her still looking for the wallet <laughs> So that's like adorable levels are like like peaked. Like it's like it could not get higher at the moment. So again, crappy situation, but you still get to experience those little fun parts about it. So you know, it reminds me a lot of when I was in Myanmar and I got really really sick down there, and um, it was horrible. And like, um, I probably should have. Uh, seen a doctor or something. It was, you know, if you saw the series, you know, I was on death's door essentially. <laughs> but anyway, um, that experience was horrible, but at the same time, the memories I have of it are of all the people that were trying to help me, and um, uh, that sticks out way more than like how much my stomach hurt and how much uh, it was difficult for me. It's just like how friendly everybody was, and that'll probably be. I'm probably going to remember when I think about this experience. I'm going to think about the Lawson girl and this little three-year-old helping me find my wallet and stuff. So um, it's a bummer, and I'm definitely bummed. But 
yeah, you know, silver lining type stuff. I guess you look for that, and <laughs> it's pretty lame to say silver lining. You feel like uh, Oprah or something. <laughs> All right, so it's been a day since I've lost my wallet, you know, about this time. It's about 11 o'clock now, about this time yesterday I was, you know, <laughs> panting, uh, frantically looking for my wallet and talking to the police and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what ended up happening is I came back um, after not finding it and going around all over the place and it's just, it, it, it's just vanished. Like, I don't know of any idea what has happened to it. So, um, again, like no credit card, no cash. No ID, nothing. Um, spent a lot of time talking to Katie yesterday. Happened to be a holiday, so she had a day off. Um, even though it was Wednesday or Thursday or whatever. I think it's Thursday. And um, spent a lot of time trying to figure out if there was a way to wire money here. And there is, like, if you have a bank account. I don't have a bank account, so we thought, oh, go open a new bank account. And then I was like, I don't have an ID that shows my address in the Japan. I can't open a bank account. Yada, yada, yada. Went around and around and around. Talked to the girl from Lawson. Got the free food. Like, yeah, free food, got the, the, the donation to <laughs> my cause at this point. And um, came back to the hotel. I talked to the lady that runs the hotel. And I was like, hey, can I stay another night? And she was like, yeah, 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 no problem. Like, okay, cool. So um, I told her that, like, I could pay for it through Airbnb, which has my credit card information saved. So um, I um, was able to pay for it. Like, I can, I, I can afford to live places because my credit card still exists. And as irresponsible as it sounds, I haven't canceled it. Um, because if I cancel it, then I'm homeless, so, um, we're gonna let that just sit out there for now, and it's in Japan, I realize, I, I, my, my, my thought process is, one, everybody's honest, two, if somebody's dishonest, they're gonna go into a store and use a credit card that says Eric Klein on it, like, that's gonna raise some eyebrows, you know what I'm saying, and then if they use it for an online purchase, they're gonna have to put their address in, so, um, I think I'm probably okay, like, I'm just gonna kind of, wager that one. I'm taking a risk, I realize. But, I mean, otherwise I'm outside. <laughs> and, no, it gets cold, so I'm not going to stay outside. So anyways, um, uh, I went to book the Airbnb thing. I booked it, and a couple minutes later, the lady comes back in. She's like, oh, we don't have any rooms tomorrow. It's like, oh, no, are you serious? Like, I, got, I, I don't know. I think there was a miscommunication between her and her husband or something. I, I don't know what happened exactly. Um, so I was like, well, um, what had happened, what my, our solution for getting me money is Katie has mailed me her credit card, which I can then use in an ATM machine here and pull cash out. Um, but it takes two days, so it'll be here on Saturday. She mailed it yesterday. And um, it, they're mailing it here. And I had asked, like, can I have something sent here? And they were like, yeah, yeah, no problem. So I was like, sweet, all this is working out. I'm just going to have to chill for a day, and then I'll have money, and I can keep moving. No problem. So then I guess, like I said, there were no beds or whatever. So she was like... Um, what do we, I was like, so what do we, what, what, what do we do? <laughs> like, I'm waiting for mail here. Like, I mean, I guess I can sleep outside, like, if I have to, but it's really cold, you know? And she was like, hold on, let me talk to my husband. She talked to her husband and said, okay, we can just, we can't give you a bed, but we can give you a futon with some sheets tonight. And I was like, that's totally fine. And then she told me, this is the best part. And this is something that I tried to talk about this day. You get to, you have bad experience, but then you get to see all these good things that happen around that bad experience. And this is one of those. So I was a bit grumpy about the, 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 this lady before, but she's gotten very warm towards me and been very kind and very helpful. So she, what she told me is like, okay, well, it, we're only going to charge you a thousand yen for the night because we can't give you a bed, which is, she doesn't have to do that. She could charge me full price. You know what I mean? Like, so I was like, amazing. So I paid with Airbnb. Airbnb's automatic charge is 3,000 yen. And I just, I'm just thinking like, whatever, screw it. Like if Airbnb is going to take the 3,000 yen and they're going to get 3,000 yen, they're helping me. I don't really care. Like it doesn't really matter. Um, and then this morning her husband came to me and gave me 2,000 yen cash. So I have cash now, which is phenomenal. Um, Ta-da. So that's like a lifesaver. Um, and uh, I do have to budget that because like, the credit card should arrive here tomorrow, should, and then it should work in the ATM, and then I should be able to get money, but if I can't, I need to have money to, like, figure something out. Um, with that 2,000 yen, theoretically, I can get back to Tokyo, because that'll pay for a cheaper ferry across the, connect and back down, so if it comes down to it, I can do that. Um, the other option I would have with that 2,000 yen, I could go buy a sleeping bag, and, um, I saw some for 1,200 yen, so that would be a solution, and, um, but anyway, like, that's a huge, huge, like, thank God. <laughs> big, big relief. And then this morning she came and she gave me a piece of bread that I haven't eaten yet, um, but I'm going to eat very soon. 
saving it for dessert after the pizza that I ordered. I realized I have Katie's credit card information, so I was like, I'm gonna order a pizza and just have them deliver it. And that's totally what I did. So for 15 bucks, Pizza Hut's gonna bring me a pizza. I wish I thought about this last night. <laughs> so that's gonna solve my hunger problem because yesterday all I ate was those chicken nuggets and one onigiri. That's all I had because I was like rationing everything else I had because I was like, how long is it gonna take, you know? So anyway, um, that's the update on what's going on. And um, I'm still hoping my wallet shows up. I, I, I have this suspicion, this gut feeling that it's gonna like be in Tokyo when I get back, like because somebody's gonna mail it to us or something. Because all my contact information is inside. So I'm kind of hoping that's what's gonna happen. And if it doesn't, I think there's 150 bucks in it. I can deal with that, not a big deal. So um, pizza time soon, <laughs> I got about 20 minutes. <laughs> I scheduled my delivery for 11.30 to 12 o'clock and at 11.29 the dude pulled up in his little car and I've got a pizza. I haven't opened it yet, but man, am I excited. I'm trying to find something that I can show you, you know, like banana for scale, that you would know what the size of is so that you can see the size of this pizza and then calculate the price and see how expensive pizza in this country is. Um, something standard size. I usually I've got a wallet, <laughs> in the wallet I've got a dollar, but uh, I don't have that right now. Okay, I have a business card, that'll work, right? So, um, this little card is business card size, like exactly. And uh, it's actually the business cards, <laughs> it's a ghetto ass business cards I've been giving people. Like a day before we left, I was like, I bet people are gonna like wanna like have contact information if I explain like that we make videos and stuff. And then I was like kind of writing it over and over sucks like in person. So I just hand wrote a bunch of uh, business cards, <laughs> business cards, name cards. It's ghetto. People look at them and they're just like, what's this? <laughs> Whatever. Okay. So anyway, here's the pizza. And um, yeah, it's Pizza Hut. I don't even remember what I ordered. Oh God. I ordered the thickest crust I could make too because uh, I wanted to have thick crust. And I'll put the business card on top. And that gives you an idea of um, how big the pizza is. And this is a medium, I think, and it was 15 bucks delivered. And uh, it's a bit expensive. I don't have any idea what a pizza in America costs anymore. But considering that they drove this thing like 10 kilometers, like, I'm kind of surprised that it was only 15 bucks. Um, and I just ordered normal stuff. So it's just bacon and um, cheese and stuff. I didn't order anything. I didn't, I didn't order no squid pizza or anything like that. Like I could have, but. This wanted like substance. Oh God, I'm so hungry. You have no idea. Um, so the pizza is very similar to what I remember Pizza Hut pizza being, where it's kind of buttery, like um, kind of like greasy feeling and buttery. But um, in Japan, I've had Pizza Hut pizza in the past and it tends to be pretty clean uh, comparatively. Mm, so this is a um, cheese sauce. There's no pizza sauce on this one. Yeah, I did do a half and half, so um, I could try two different kinds. And let's see what I got. I don't really, they, they, they look so similar, I'm not even sure where the half and half is. Um, maybe this is the same stuff, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's pizza. <laughs> I felt pretty weird to eat that pizza. I probably ate it too fast, and now my stomach is all like, Bleh. but I can't turn down this piece of bread that I've got. So um, yeah, the lady that uh, the lady that works here, I guess the owner, gave me this. Oh, it's really, really, really soft. I'm not sure if she makes it or if they get it from someplace locally that makes it or something, but it certainly doesn't seem like it's store bought. Um, and on it says that the flavor is plain. Oh, it's really good. It's really sweet, um, but not super sweet. It tastes like. Um, there's some sort of cake that I used to have all the time when I was a kid. And it tastes, oh, like strawberry shortcake? It tastes like strawberry shortcake, like the cake part, with a little bit more sweetness to it. If one black cat crosses your path, that's bad news. What about two? Is there two there anymore? Are they one left? Well, there were two black cats there when we sat down. <laughs> yeah, so we were enjoying that and we tried to set up a video, but now... <laughs> Wait. Now all the cats are getting scared away by the old men. Maybe they'll come back during the video. I don't know. Is this the old man they're afraid of? No, it's all the other old men. <laughs> other he's old got, men. Oh, oh, he's part of the thing. <laughs> Interesting. Well, if you enjoy this man and you uh, would like to subscribe, 
maybe he'll come back and be in the video again. <laughs> I don't know. That was very interesting. I mean, um, we were sitting here with a camera jammed in a bush. And we're just talking to the bush. Maybe he thinks we were really strange. Yeah. yeah. Who's the strange one in this situation? Us, uh, for, for real. The for two real. weird white people talking into a bush. Yeah. Definitely us. I, I looked over and he was just going like this. Why did I didn't see his face? <laughs> that was weird. Okay. Well, um, if you like this randomness, uh, like, subscribe, go to Facebook, Twitter, find us. Get in on Patreon and make awesome adventures keep happening. Yeah. Thank you to all the patrons. <laughs> um, this video was kind of a bummer. Like, uh, as everybody knows, it has gotten this far. Um, I lost my wallet, and just to, I figured I would just give a spoiler here and let you know that um, it's months later now, and I have not seen that wallet again. So that wallet is gone forever, and all of its contents are gone forever, at least for my life. Um, and I, I don't know where it went. I really don't. Um, my suspicion is that um, I, the night before uh, this video was when I had first arrived in Hokkaido, and that night I had worn a pair of shorts I don't usually wear, and I went to a convenience store. I just store. saw you in some short shorts. Yeah, they were like kind of short shorts, like uh, the, the running shorts that I have, the gray ones. No, 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 they were way shorter. <laughs> 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 That's an image for everybody. So um, I, I think what ended up happening is when I was on my bike, I, like an idiot, put the wallet in my pocket and it fell out of my pocket. The other idea that I had that maybe where the wallet went is that I had it in my hand when I was throwing everything away and I threw it in the trash. That's completely probably a possibility as well. But, I mean, I really don't know. Um, I, no, I, don't think it, I don't think it was stolen. I don't think anything notorious happened or anything. Um, we left the credit card active on it for like a week or something and um, nothing ever happened. Like nobody ever tried to use it or anything like that. I know trash that can't use credit cards. Yeah, that's true. Well, trash men can, but not in Japan. They mm, wouldn't do true. it. True. You know, I think if a human being had found it, nine times out of ten, they would have returned it to us. So anyway, um, it's gone. It, everything is, you know, everything is solved with that. Bummer, but um, it, didn't, uh, it, it didn't end up being too traumatic. Um, so you got me a, uh, you had set up, what, what happened on your side okay, when I lost it? Okay, yeah, so I got a telephone call. I was uh, on my way to go play drums, and I get a telephone call, and Eric is like, I'm, I don't have my wallet. I'm like, well, shit, what are we going to do about that? And I immediately thought, like, I've got to wire you money. Like, just immediately knew that he needed money. Yeah. And uh, so I thought about, like, where can you wire money here? Um, well, first I have to go and get money. So I went and I got money out of the bank and stupidly, which I've done this several times, I got a thousand dollars out of the bank. I took my, in Japan, your card and the receipt come out first, which I think is Wait, great. I because don't know if I've heard this. <laughs> the card and the receipt come out first. So I took that and I walked away from the machine. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, I told you about this. <laughs> I, I was forgot. so upset. So this, this ended up making the day so much more stressful. And um, so I walked away and I went and played drums. And when I went to pay the guy after I was done playing drums, I realized that $1,000 had been just sitting there for someone to take and enjoy. And I just, I, I was walking so fast. And I, I think my eyes were really blurry because I could have just cried from the stress because I knew that he needed money and that we needed to wire stuff. <laughs> I, I had an event like of multitudes I'd never imagined ahead of me and I had fucked up really hard just a moment ago. So I went to the bank that um, I had used the ATM, went up to the ATM, there's nothing there, like there's no money just sitting there with the door yeah. still open an hour later, that's not gonna happen. Um, they do have telephones at the ATM that you can call and talk to someone. So I picked up the phone and I've done this before with a Japanese friend who helped me when I left my money in the machine before. <laughs> So basically, people, if you see Katie going into a bank, just follow her and hope. Yeah. <laughs> you might get rich. <laughs> I'm pretty good about it now. Um, well, I, I called them and they would not speak English. And I just started crying over the phone. I was just like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Um, and then I realized, well, I'll just check the balance on my card. And if the balance has gone back to the original balance, then I'm good. If it hasn't, then I'm going to freak out. Um, it had gone back. 
Okay. So I was just so the like, machine probably realized the you machine didn't take it, closed the door, closed the door, and, and put, the put, money put, put the money in. back in the line. Yeah. yeah so smart. there was really no problem with that, but the the amount of stress that came from that yeah, thus was the the wave that I rode for the rest of the day. Um, for wiring money, we I, ta had I thought, talked about that a lot in the video. Okay. We, by going through uh, the convenience stores and all yeah, that, that was all so, covered. So all that didn't work out. In the end, I mailed you money. Yeah. In through the postal system, and they'll see, and they'll see in the next episode, I believe, if that works. Yeah. I think that's it. Some of the problem I was telling this about Katie, like when I edit these, I edited the video that this is going to the end of that we're talking about right now, like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's all like really hard for me to even tell. Like, wait, what are they seeing in this particular video? <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that the that they'll see how that pans out. In the next, uh, yeah, the next I show. mailed you money and a credit card. Mm, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And the money and that was, was that was nerve wracking. Like, but anyway, I mean, it all worked out. Like, it sucks, I lost some money, not a tremendous amount of money, maybe a couple hundred bucks or something, and my driver's license in America, I lost that, but I actually just got that back, so I was able to do that online, so it wasn't really traumatic, it was just a bit of a dark cloud for a little what while. What about your Yamada Denki card? Yeah, I'm gonna have to go That's see if they. They might be able to give me a new one. I don't know. It's like a little card you get from like uh, like Best Buy sort of a, like a points a, card a points for card. electronics. Yeah, store. there's like hundreds yeah. of dollars on it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I haven't talked to him about it yet. Um, so, to, to instead of doing um, like straight questions like we usually do at the end of these, um, I just wanted to talk about. Um, a lot of people have asked us if we have any future trips and stuff. So there's a whole lot of people that have asked, like, oh, what are you planning for the future? What are you planning for the future? What are you planning for the future? And yeah, that's basically what we're planning for the future. We're going to Borneo, and um, Borneo, I believe, is the biggest island in Asia, and it um, has Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, and Burune? Is that how you say it? Burune. I say Brunei. Brunei, but I think Buru. Yeah, no, Brunei. Brunei. I don't know. Brunei? Burunei. Big B. We're going <laughs> yeah, Big we're going. B. It's really dumb. I, I, I've heard it pronounced in a Japanese way. I've heard it pronounced English, which I can't remember at the moment, obviously. And I've heard it pronounced Burundi. in Burundi. Yeah, in like Malay or whatever it is. So it's really, really cute. Burundi, I think. I think you've got that. That's the English pronunciation. Burundi. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's very confusing. I've heard it in three languages, and I don't know which one to use. Yeah, we're I've going somewhere. We're going somewhere. So anyway, um, we're going to this island, and so first we're flying to Kuala Lumpur, and then after that we're going to hop over to Borneo, and we're going to be there for three weeks starting in mid-December. So that'll be our winter trip. As people that have watched us for a while know, we take a lot of those. Like every year we take, tend to take mm -hmm. one big trip, and this is the big trip we're going to do. And, You're um, not going to die, right? Yeah, I'm hoping not to get food poisoning. Um, I He's actually going to go to the doctor. I, 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 I never had food poisoning in Indonesia. And I never had food poisoning in Malaysia. So we've been to both those places in the past and that was all right. But um, part of the reason that we're going is because um, Brunei, 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 um, we haven't been there. And it's like basically the last country in Eastern Asia that we haven't been to, depending on how you cut the geography, um, aside from North Korea, which we're just not going to. So um, it's kind of like, in a way, kind of like checking off that box how we've been a lot of, you know, all the Southeastern Asia and everything. And um, on the other, the other part of it is that it's just supposed to be a beautiful island with a lot to do. So I don't know. I'm pretty excited about going. And I know very little about it, which is kind of the most exciting. I know there's a part. mountain that you wanted to climb at, at one some point. It's orangutans. Orangutans? Yeah, orangutans. That's wow. the thing there. Yeah. What? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not scared of any food. Orangutans, scared. <laughs> you might be anything, orangutan food. You might with, become the food. <laughs> anything with a furry paws that might look close to my paw? No, man. No, man. I don't oh. have furry paws. They're all right. They're a little furry on this side. Furry. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But anyway, I hope everybody's excited to see that series when I'm it starts excited. airing in probably January or February. And until then, I've got a couple of things from Japan to post. Um, and then I've um, got the hitchhiking series. It's probably going to run forever. So, yeah. Uh, You're not coming back. Huh? You're not coming back? From the hitchhiking series? Yeah. I, I In their world, I'm still gone. <laughs> in my world, you're still here. <laughs> it's true. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.